You have probably heard about copilots. Have you ever wondered how complicated it is to create a copilot yourself that connects to an SAP system? Join me and follow me along for the next 10 minutes to create your very own copilot that actually also connects to an SAP system and fetches product information. In order to get an environment, I've signed up for the Power Platform Development Plan. It's just a few clicks, you only need an email and you're ready to go with a fully fledged Power Platform environment. Next, I'm going to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. The very first time you sign up here, you can actually request a trial environment. Once you have done this, you will end up at this first screen. In my first tests, I actually had some issues because I chose an environment that was located not inside the US. I guess over time, new functionalities are released and rolled out across the globe. But if you want to get started with the latest and greatest functionalities, I would recommend to use an environment that is in the region US. Once that is done, we are ready to go. So let's create our first copilot. I'm providing a name, the language is English, and for the website, I'm going to use sap.com. This means that my copilot crawls the website and is able to answer questions based on it. It's actually pretty powerful because with this, we can really ground the copilot to make sure that it does not answer questions with arbitrary information from the internet, but it really relies on the content that is provided and is available on this website. Later on, we can actually add additional functionalities and websites and documents to enrich the scope with which Copilot can use to answer my questions. Now that the Copilot is ready, we can actually start and immediately ask a question. If I ask Copilot about what is SAP, it not only provides me with an answer, but it also provides me with references to the website where this information came from. With this working copilot, that's already a fantastic start and it can help me in a lot of cases to provide a chat experience on static websites. But it gets even better than that. With the plugins, we can actually enhance the interaction with the copilot with um, generative AI functionalities. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the generative AI section here, where, by the way, we can upload documents um, that can also be used as content. But here we need to enable the dynamic chaining with generative actions preview functionality. Make sure to save these changes. With this, we can actually go to topics and plugins. Here on the topics and plugins page, we can start and add a plugin action, which is and there to enrich our Copilot experience. As you can see, there are a number of plugins already available. And for example, the Get Weather Forecast um, is something that has been documented in many other um, tutorials already. What I want to do is I want to show how to create a new flow and use this as the foundation for our plugin. With this flow, with this Power Automate flow, we can actually add a lot of functionalities in there, which is then returned to the Copilot. So to get started, we could potentially ask for some input variables. Um, then obviously we can also provide feedback to the copilot. So once we do certain activities in our Power Automate flow, we, we can return a string value um, back to our copilot. So I'll just call this return to copilot functionalities. And to start with, we, we actually want to start with a very, very simple example. We'll just create or initialize a variable set a parameter to this one and just return this value back to our copilot screen. So here we'll select initialize variable, we'll provide this with a name, so we'll call it um, return variable and we um, select a string and provide a value. This value again <clears throat> is just an arbitrary test, so this is some data from the Power Automate flow. With this we can actually um, return this variable now in the response to copilot. We can save the whole flow, but actually before we do this, we should change the name. Instead of run a flow from copilot, we'll just add a v3 in this specific case to make it unique. Now we save the Power Automate flow and switch back to Copilot Studio. In Copilot Studio, we can refresh the available um, actions. And one of the actions that we can now find in our list is 
the run a flow from Copilot v3. So exactly the one that we just created. I'll select this one and now we uh, actually need to specify one of the most important things and that is the model description. This text actually will be the trigger point for our Copilot. So when someone adds something in the chat, um, Copilot now understands that because of this model description, this specific flow should be used. So again, if we scroll down further, there could potentially be some input vari variables. In our case, we only have output variables. So if I click on add, I can select the variable that is returned from our Power Automate flow. And that's basically it. Now we have enabled the Copilot plugin in our chat. Now, in order to activate this, this can actually take some time. And so it's always good to give it a few minutes to really make sure that um, this model description is taken into account. But after a few minutes, um, you should be ready to go and you should be able to test this. So in my specific case, I'm using almost the very same sentence that what was provided in the description. So show me product information from SAP. What we expect now is obviously that this Power Automate flow is triggered and that we get the, the very simple static response, which is this is some data from the Power Automate flow. So perfect. We can see that Copilot um, was able to trigger our action, which then triggered the Power Automate flow and returned the information. Now, obviously, we want to make it a little more dynamic. So in order to show the power of the capabilities, we'll just use the HTTP connector. With this HTTP connector, I can call any HTTP endpoint out there. So what we'll do is we'll just um, create a new get um, functionality and we'll call the OData service from the public SAP ES5 system. Um, the URL for this is something like this. It's um, SAP um, ES5 um, subdevcenter.com. And then we'll look for the um, product set and we'll just return the fir first five um, um, products from there. Now we'll provide a username and password for this um, ES5 system. We can then save the flow again. And now as a last step, we need to map the results of this HTTP call. So the, the return information, these five products that we're looking for um, and return this information into our response to Copilot flow. So what we'll do next, we'll just take a look at the initialized variable. And instead of this hard coded value, we'll use the return information from our HTTP request. So now we are returning the body, which is basically a JSON field <clears throat> or a JSON structure that we are getting back from the SAP system. But that's actually all that we need. So if we save again our Power Automate flow, if we switch then back to Copilot Studio, and if we just ask the very same question again, show me product information from SAP, then our action is triggered. The action calls the Power Automate flow. And you can see the Power Automate flow has now returned the top five products from the SAP system. And Copilot is even rendering this information in a nice way here in our chat. And that's if we actually take a look at the real OData service. So if we call this OData service from the GW sample basic product set, then you can see all this um, um, technical metadata. But Copilot, with the help of generative AI, was able to extract the relevant information, render it in a nice way, and return it here in Copilot Studio.